This is, I believe, the first film that you directed that doesn't come originally from your own screenplay. So what was it that attracted you to the script or to the story? Well, it was, I, I read a lot of screenplays that are really well written and have a lot of great things about them. Mm -hmm. And it's rare that I feel kind of personally drawn to them. And this was one of those rare exceptions. I just, there were so many things about it that immediately made me want to direct it. Um, the content of it being about a woman who's in an extended adolescent and who's, who f is so human, she just felt so identifiable yeah. to me in a way that, um, I mean, now I actually feel like we're in a cultural moment where there are more and more women being given roles like this and allowed right. to be, kind of break out of the box of the, you know, three or five little roles that Hollywood has allowed women to play. <laughs> um, sort of idealized, you know, really have it together or, you know, the patient or a grieved wife or whatever, like all these kind of, you know, very specific restrictions women have had. And here's this woman who's actually allowed to just be a real human fumbling towards who am I kind of person. And um, that was the main thing that drew me to it. And then the way that Andrea Siegel, the writer, um, the way she approaches comedy in such a very um, organic kind of character-based place. Mm -hmm. And the dialogue was just so breezy and um, ultimately I was correct in thinking that it would be something easy for actors to turn into their own, um, those lines. Um, and I loved these, un this unusual, uh, unexpected relationship of, of you know, this friendship between a 16-year-old and a 28-year-old. Mm -hmm. um, my very first film was actually about um, a 23-year-old who meets her 13-year-old self mm -hmm. in this sort of twist of magic surrealism. And so I felt like it was really nice to be able to go back to sort of similar territory, you know, in a way, a very different film, but similar territory now that I actually know what I'm doing as a filmmaker. <laughs> <laughs> you know, have a few a few uh, years under my belt of experience. So yeah, I was really, and then I really connected strongly to Andrea herself, mm -hmm. the writer. I felt like we had um, a real affinity. You know, our voices are very similar. Mm -hmm. On your previous films, you have an interesting creative process, and a lot of it is improv based. And now here you're working from a, from a written script. Mm -hmm. So how did your creative process change? How did you have to adapt? Well, you know, it really helped that I've done a bunch. I had made three um, improv-based movies, but I had done a lot of television over the last few mm -hmm. years, and so that was really helpful because um, I've worked on, you know, I, I worked on a script on Mad Men where it has to be letter perfect, mm -hmm. and there's no diversion, you know, divergence from the from the words as written at all. Right. And then on New Girl, a show like New Girl, you actually you write it as written, but then you can play around a little bit and um, you, as they say, open it up, you know, and, and allow, and people can, can actually be, um, have a little more freedom with the dialogue or, or try out alternate jokes or that kind of thing. So I worked um, in a variety of ways with, with scripts, which I think really helped me. I just had to remind myself that in this case, I was, it was my movie as opposed to in, in the realm of television, the writer is the king, right? Yeah. They, they're the ones who are the final arbiter of what ends up on the screen. And Andrea had to actually remind me of that. She, she would, I would sort of ask her for permission to change a scene, and she'd be like, Lynn, it's your movie. Yeah. <laughs> and she really gave it to me with her blessing to turn it into my film. So that was really, it was really fun. Mm -hmm. Sam was telling us that he really tried to stick to the script, but there were moments where he asked to change a word here, a word there. How much improvisation was there? Very little, again, because there, we didn't need to. Everything, you know, mm -hmm. for me it's whatever works. And in this case, the lines really did work. You know, mm -hmm. they really did. And then occasionally, just to keep things fresh, like, like Sam is definitely, for instance, one of those actors who really likes to loosen up, you know, either at the yeah. beginning of a, of a scene, getting into it, or Sometimes in the middle he'll throw something in there, or and sometimes it's not even a line. Sometimes it's more like a little surprise with a prop that he's had prepared, but the actors, the other actors in the scene, don't know he's yeah. going to do it. Um, just again to keep things sort of lively and, and dynamic, you know, and never gets stale. Mm -hmm. One of the keys to this film's success, I think, is in the casting. I mean, after watching it, I can't think of three other actors to replace the three that are in the Me film. They're fantastic. Yeah, Kira Knightley is not first person I would ever have chosen for a role like this, how did she come on board to this project? Well, 
the reason I thought of her immediately was because um, 10, 12 years ago, mm -hmm. she was in a couple of roles that um, that showed a side of her that I have not, I hadn't seen, but I knew that she still had that inside of her. Mm -hmm. And those roles were Bend It Like Beckham yeah. and the first Pirates movie. And I just remember being completely floored by how someone so young, because she was only 17 when she made that yeah. first Pirates movie, could have such a sense of confidence in her self and her physicality. She was so physical and so her, her comedy was physical. She was so game, you know, and, and just had such a good time on screen. And that was the Kira that I cast. That was the one, you know, that I, I was thinking of. Um, because she's been bound up in a lot of bodices, a lot of corsets over the years, you yeah. know, and all these period roles. Mm -hmm. But um, I wanted to see that other side of her come out, and she really... And it was actually appropriate that I cast the 17-year-old version of her, because that was who she had to get in touch with yeah. for this role, who's in a kind of extended adolescent state. So. Mm -hmm. Talking about you know, films and television series about extended adolescence, why do you think people are now so attracted, or they're making so many films and TV shows with people who are sort of stuck in a perpetual limbo. Well, I think it's an eternally identifiable thing. And it might be a cultural thing, maybe that people are, are being, um, culturally we've, we've been allowed this kind of extended period of looking, searching and looking for ourselves. Um, and you know, there was a day and age when people would get married right out of high school and have kids by 20, you know, and that was sort of the norm. But now it really isn't. I think a lot of kids, a lot of people are waiting later and later um, to make those kinds of adult um, steps, you know. Mm -hmm. And some people, for some people, it's not true. Some people still get get married earlier and and sort of go through all of those things. But um, and and sometimes find out it doesn't work out so well. Like Sam's character is somebody who I think did it right out of the gate, and mm -hmm. he and his wife both realized, ah, we did this a little too fast, you know. Um, but I, yeah, so maybe it's a cultural thing. I also do feel like there have been, over the last few decades, um, uh, that there actually have been a lot of films where men get to do that. Yeah. Like, I mean, I think of The Graduate as a great example. Mm -hmm. um, and I identified really strongly with Dustin Hoffman's character and uh, never, and, and just didn't get to see women do it so much. And as I say, there's there are more opportunities now, but when I first read the script, it was like, oh my God, this is so fresh. I haven't seen a woman get to do this. So, mm -hmm. so Laggies is you're f more of a mainstream turn for you. Are you going to return to your indie roots in time soon? Uh, yes, I, I hope to. I hope to do, I have three different projects in development and all of them are so completely different. One of them is a very small, you mm -hmm. know, improvised film. Um, probably not as small as I've done in the past, but smaller and more okay. intimate. I mean, the thing that's nice about working um, in that way is just it's highly collaborative, you know, really yeah. actor-centered way of working, mm -hmm. which I love working um, that way with a smaller crew. But also, I have another project that is probably going to be a much, much bigger project, much bigger budget, um, with more action and sort of a caper aspect to it okay. um, than, uh, than Laggies, even. And then another one that will probably be a similar size to Laggies. So I, you know, I have a lot already on the, on the stove, yeah. you know, simmering away, mm -hmm. and, um, and yeah, more variety to come after.